What's going on guys, it is Frankie here. Week nine of the 2022 NFL season, the calendar turned to October to November. The playoff chase is starting to get a little bit closer. The football is gonna get a lot better and a lot more exciting. Let's see what happens here. Here are my predictions for week nine of the NFL season. The Thursday night game, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Houston Texans, the Eagles are 13 point favorites. The Eagles are really good. I know that's an obvious statement at this point. They're clearly the best team in the NFC. I think right now we're looking at a Bills Eagles Super Bowl if everything goes according to plan, but it is football, and on any given Sunday anything can happen. But right now, if I had to bet money on it, I would say Eagles, uh, Eagles and Bills. Jalen Hurts and AJ Brown continue to be a electrifying combination. Hurts threw four touchdowns, three to Brown, who had 156 yards on six catches. Uh, the Philly offense just looks amazing right now, and amazingly for Philadelphia, not only are they undefeated, they have the easiest remaining strength of schedule. The next three games are against the Texans, Commanders, and Colts. So now you're starting to look at, all right, is 16-0 a pot or 17-0? Is that a possibility for this team? Again, I don't think they're the best team in football, but they have they have a great schedule coming up. But there's always, it seems like, one game that slips every team up. So that might happen here with the Eagles. But they look great right now, man. Eagles undefeated. The Phillies are in the World Series. Everything going perfectly according to plan for Philadelphia. And then you have Houston, who is just there. Um, pretty bad loss yesterday against Tennessee, against their backup quarterback. Um, Mills at 152 yards, one touchdown interception. Um, Pierce, 35 yards, whatever. Uh, yeah, just, just not, they only gained 161 yards, 90 coming on the final drive. Not a good day for Houston here. I think Philadelphia, most of us agree Philadelphia wins game with about whether or not they're going to cover the spread. I think they will cover the spread here. 13 points. I like Philly in this game. Give me the Eagles, minus 13. The Los Angeles Chargers and the Atlanta Falcons. The Chargers are three-point favorites. The Chargers are coming off a bye, which leads into my prediction that I think they're going to win. Um, they're on a three-game winning streak here. or They were on a three-game winning streak. A couple ugly losses, but then uh, last week, pretty bad performance against Seattle. Although Seattle looks like a team that, you know, may have some... Geno Smith does not look like a mediocre quarter. He actually looks pretty decent. But, um, yeah, that could have been the Chargers' first four-game winning streak in 2018. Instead, they just... There's just been a bunch of injuries with this team. Two, and then they lost J, uh, JC Jackson, and they lost Mike Williams. So uh, I'm going to have to take the Chargers here, um, again, on the bye over Atlanta, even though neither one of these teams right now is that impressive to me. I mean, the Chargers should be better, but again, they have all these injuries. And um, Atlanta did pull off this one against Carolina to take the lead in the NFC South, which is bizarre. Never would have imagined that here. Uh, somebody has to win this division. Um, but yeah, they, they have a nice running game. Um, they had a nice running game yesterday. Uh, nice interception, a pick six by Lorenzo uh, Carter, and uh, yeah, the, the Atlanta has been um, Atlanta's been hanging in there. But I think this is the chance for the Chargers on the road after a bye. I think the Chargers will rest up a little bit here and they'll get this win over Atlanta uh, again. I, I credit to Atlanta there, um, you know, for for, for for being this far, getting this far, leading the NFC South. NFC South. Although the defense looked awful yesterday, um, they did have the um, again. They, they had a nice. Nice pick six, but then you also had the, uh, the awful Hail Mary at the end of the game there. Um, DJ Moore just running by two guys. So I'm going to take the Chargers here in this game on the road. I think the Chargers pull this one off. Give me the Chargers minus three. The Miami Dolphins and the Chicago Bears. The Dolphins are four and a half point favorites. Another uh, great win for Miami yesterday, albeit against Detroit. Um, their offense has been pretty ridiculous here so far, and, and, and Tua Tungvalu continues to get better and better, it seems like, every week. 382 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, and then you had 100 yards receiving from both Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, which I believe is the third time this season that that has happened. Uh, the defense, there's a lot of injuries this there in the secondary. Um, you know, Brian, uh, we do have like Brian Jones, Nick Nunnum, and Brandon, uh, Brandon Jones, Brian Jones, Nick Nunnum, all out here. So if there's a problem there at Miami, it's the secondary there. Um, but their offense has been electrifying, and that is what's going to, I think, carry them to playoffs and who knows what else uh chicago uh they allowed uh they did score 29 points which is the most allowed by dallas's defense but their run defense has been has been abysmal uh they entered this week 29th against the run and it didn't get any better yesterday as well tony pollard run for 131 yards uh fields gets better it's not all his fault um there's there's like really no talent around him um but he looked better yesterday 17 for 23 151 yards two touchdowns he had 60 rushing yards and a touchdown the offense did score on four of its six trips inside the red zone, which is helpful there. But yeah, Miami, you just look at the offensive firepower on Miami compared to Chicago. It's its its no contest. So I think Miami gets the win here on the road. They pull this one off uh, against a Chicago team that is, is getting better, but not, not, not well enough, not quick enough. Give me the Dolphins minus four and a half.
the Carolina Panthers and the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are eight-point favorites at home. Now, we have not seen the Bengals yet. They play later tonight. Um, Carolina is, uh, I mean, Steve Wilkes, if he wants to keep his job, he's got to do better than this. Although, that was almost a miraculous one yesterday with the Hail Mary. But then they missed two field goals. And it, it, it's just, it, it's, the Baker Mayfield experiment, man, is, I, I, you know what? I criticized Cleveland. Why did they get rid of him for Deshaun Watson? For a terrible guy, Deshaun Watson. You know, Deshaun Watson. But you know what? They realized it. They realized that something was wrong with this guy before anyone else. And so now I kind of understand. Even though it is Deshaun Watson and you have icky feelings about it, I do kind of understand why they got rid of him. He, he just... It, it's... Um, the fact that he was out there yesterday, that P.J. Walker had a pick six, and they never considered replacing Baker with P.J. Walker. Or P.J. Walker with Baker. Baker. That's a problem. That's a real issue there. And so that, that just might be... He might just be a backup here from here on out. Um, of course, now Carolina getting with Christian McCaffrey. Um, it, it, it's just, yeah. I mean, now Devontae Foreman did have 100 consecutive yard games, uh, uh, back-to-back 100 yard games, but it's not enough to, to keep it going here, keep it rolling. But Cincinnati, um, we'll see how they do. Um, let's see how they do tonight. I do have Cincinnati winning uh, tonight's game. I do have them winning here against uh, Carolina. Uh, they, they've had their best offensive stretch here of the year. Um, it was another game where Burrow had 400 um Four more passing yards, and um, so that's five games of four more passing yards in his first three seasons. He's the first quarterback ever to do that. Even though they lost Jamar Chase, they still have uh, Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins. I think Cincinnati here will win this one, as Carolina is just desperately trying to stay afloat. I think Cincinnati wins this one by at least fourteen. Uh, they get their offense going here in a big way, and they shut down whoever it is that Carolina has on their offense for playing at the quarterback position. Give me the Bengals minus eight. The Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions. The Packers are three and a half point favorites here. Um, it might be weird for me to go pick at Detroit here, but something just off with Green Bay. And I know it's obvious, but something is off. They lost four in a row. Uh, th- th- there's nothing really right now. That's the only thing that is exciting right now is Aaron Jones. Um, Christian Watson. He comes back and then he gets hurt. They're already without Lazar. They're already without Cobb. Um, I feel like a loss. Even if the Green Bay wins, I think it'll be a very, very close game. I think it could be, it could, it could be a three-pointer here. I'm just there's nothing looking good here for Green Bay's offense, and their defense is bad, and they have no receivers at all, and they're gonna need to make a change here. Are you just gonna let Rodgers just? And yeah, Rodgers has been bad um, as well, but I mean, I would also say he's got nobody to throw to right now. Uh, are you really just gonna let Rodgers? The, the deadline's coming. You know, are, the deadline's coming up here. Are you gonna trade for anybody at all? Um, it might not be, although it might not be enough to, to save anything here, but they're going to need something. Are you just going to let Rodgers just waste away his, his career here, his final few years here? I don't know. Um, Detroit, though, could not stop Tua at all. Uh, what do you throw for 380 yards, three touchdowns? So, so if this is the time to do it, if this is the time to do it, to, uh, if this is Green Bay's time to turn it around, this is the game because against a Detroit team with no secondary, or at least here, as of, they've allowed 24 points in nine consecutive games. So they, uh, this is the time to do it. There's, it's going to be a very high-scoring offensive uh, show. But in the end, I think Detroit will. Um, I think Detroit will, will cover the spread here at least because the offense um, will, uh, will, will will pick it up here in this game. And uh, it'll, it'll be an offensive explosion. It should be. But you know, with Swift and Brown uh, coming back, they scored 27 points in the first half, and they fell out after that. So I think Detroit covers, but ever so slightly, over the Packers. Give me the Lions plus three and a half. But I do have the Packers winning this one. The Indianapolis Colts and the New England Patriots. The Patriots, six-point favorites. Um, I, I mean, I give the Colts credit for hanging in there without Matt Ryan. Sam Ellinger's in there. You know, Ellinger didn't make any mistakes. Just a solid, clean game. 17 for 23, 200 yards. Um, 16 points was not enough here. It did help that Washington you know, came running back there late. But uh, I have no idea what's going to happen in the It's going to be Ellinger or, Ryan, or uh, Matt Ryan going forward. Uh, New England... Ugly, ugly win, but they figured it out. Um, Bill Belichick uh, now second place on the career wins list. Um, so n- a nice game from uh, Ramondre Stevenson. Zach Wilson returned to, uh, turned back to Zach Wilson without his running game there. Uh, Mac Jones just whatever. Uh, just still makes really. I know he's in year two already, but gosh, he makes, he makes so many weird decisions there. Um, just his decision making is not all the way there yet. Um, but, you know, good to have him back here after, um, but it's also, yeah, you know, he, he had a high left ankle sprain, so maybe we just come to expect this. For me personally, uh, I've got Indianapolis covering the spread here. It's six points on the road. I think Indianapolis will cover. Um, I just, I, I don't think New England's going to win this game by, by, by very much. If New England wins this, I, I don't think, 
again, whether it's Ellinger or Vine, I'm looking at it. Do I think New England's going to win this game by more than six? I don't know. It's, it, 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 again, this does not seem like it's going to be um, a, a dynamic game offensively. So I think Indianapolis will cover here. They'll get close to New England. Whether or not they win is another story, but I think they will definitely cover the six points. Give me the Colts, plus six, over New England. The Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets. The Bills are 12.5 point favorites. Bills are the best team in football. I know that we talk about this every week. The Eagles are undefeated, but the Bills are the best team. Um, Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, just wow. Three straight games of 100 yards receiving for uh, Diggs and a touchdown. Uh, for two straight games. Um, the run defense is maybe the little concern. Um, I mean, we, we, I mean at, least, at least yesterday. They, they, uh, although they let Aaron Jones uh, run pretty uh, run pretty, but that's the only minor concern. They are the most complete team up and down. Um, you know, if, if they got the ground, if they had 154 yards rushing, which is a season high, so if they get the ground game going, there's nothing stopping this team. And yeah, the Jets, whatever. <laughs> Jets. I, I, I pretty much knew that when Brees Hall got hurt, that was like, this was probably going to be the beginning of the end for the Jets, and I, I stand by that here. I think all good things must come to an end. I think that will be here for the Jets. They had a four-game winning streak, and now uh, it's gone. Wasn't through three picks. Uh, they, they put a lot of pressure to him, and yeah, he's usually, you put pressure to him, and it's just, it's not looking good. Uh, it, it, he definitely struggles with that. Um, so I, I just think this is the chance for the Bills to just run this one, just just dominate the Jets. Uh, and yet another year, what is it, 13 straight losses for the Jets against the Patriots, and people really felt like this was going to be their time. But uh, not, 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 not yet. Not yet, folks. Even though, I mean, it, your time will come eventually because New England is on the downside here. But, yeah, just just not yet for the Jets. Uh, it tried there, but on the end, yeah, for the Bills, overall, offense, defense, just a completely dynamic team. And they will do that here. They'll, they'll head to the, the Meadowlands, and they will destroy the Jets, I feel like. Um, the Jets, yeah, again, once they lost pre that would be it. That was it for them. I feel like that was, that was it for them being a competitive team this year. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong, you know. They might be able to pull something up, but I don't think I don't think Zach Wilson is good enough without the running game. So I'm going to roll with the Bills here to win this one handily over the Jets. Give me the Bills minus 12 and a half. The Minnesota Vikings and the Washington Commanders. The Vikings are three point favorites. Uh, Vikings, great win coming off the bye, um, coming around in the second half. You know what? I, mean, I gotta start. I gotta start believing Kirk Cousins now. I guess I may have to actually do that. 34 points. Um, you know, it, it's never easy with them. It's, it's, I mean, giving up 26 there to Arizona. They forced. Uh, they did force three turnovers. Uh, had finished the game with two sacks, but uh, had to come back in the second half, but they were able to do that. They did lose Dalvin Thompson uh, with a calf injury. We don't know. Um, he's going to be out for a while. We don't know how long. But, yeah, Minnesota Minnesota looks good here. Minnesota looks very, very good here. Kirk Cousins has, has definitely stepped it up, and the whole Vikings team has as well. Um, Washington had to fight to get that win uh, against uh, Indianapolis. Now a three-game winning streak. Taylor Heineke uh, with a nice 89-yard drive there late. Um, so, Commanders... Might be able to make the playoffs here. Don't know if they're going to be competitive there, but uh, they do have two tough games here. They got Minnesota and Philadelphia back to back, so that is going to be very, very uh, difficult to see how they're going to play after that. I'm going to take the Vikings here in this one. Overall, better team, um, and Washington is just—it's it's ugly ones for Washington mostly at this point. But I think Minnesota will get this one done. Uh, the offense will uh, deliver. Give me the Vikings minus three. The Las Vegas Raiders and the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Raiders are one-point favorites. Raiders, just shut out. Just, uh, we were hope, wondering if they were going to come back after the Texans, uh, after beating the Texans, and maybe they were going to turn things around. Nope. Uh, a no show yesterday against New Orleans. And uh, yeah, the Josh McDaniels era, not off to the best start. Devontae Adams, one catch for three yards. I mean, could you trade him back to the Packers? It wouldn't kill Aaron Rodgers at this point if you could trade, get Devontae Adams back. And he's not, it doesn't seem like he's doing anything there. Um, it doesn't, like, it doesn't seem like there's anything going there. So we'll see what happens there at the deadline uh, tomorrow if, if uh, the Raiders do anything. But, yeah, th th this one, this isn't really a sexy matchup. Um, both these teams going off losses here. Jacksonville uh, did lose the London game against Denver, which I don't think anybody watched. I didn't watch because it was on the ESPN Plus. But did see the highlights later. And he, uh, Trevor Stetney went 156 yards, six yards to carry. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, it was uh, the Jaguars... Tried to get to, to, to Wilson there. Uh, but without Josh Allen, Josh Allen really didn't do much there, which I was surprised for Jacksonville. But uh, whatever. <laughs> I, I take the Jaguars here. Why? I guess they're at home. Uh, this is this is not a sexy game at all. But I'm going to take Jacksonville, one point underdog. Eh, why the heck not? Give me the Jaguars plus one. I don't really have analysis for this game. Just that Jacksonville. 
The Seattle Seahawks and the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals are two and a half point favorites. Seattle um, beat my Giants. I guess it was bound to happen at some point um, that somebody was going to get, get to my Giants. Geno Smith, man, you know what? Good for him. Good for him after everything he's been through over the last couple years. A lot of bad breaks um, with getting punched in the face and getting his ACL torn up and replacing Eli Manning and then just being a backup and just waiting and just waiting and waiting. And finally, uh, he's shown that maybe, maybe people gave up on him too quickly. He's really shown. It's been great to see him over the last few years really step up. Um, and uh, they're now top of the NFC West at 5-3. and three. Uh, Saquon, um, the, the, the defense really did a good job uh, neutering Saquon. Uh, and uh, Gino looked, again, after uh, tough start at the beginning, but then really uh, locked it down. Tyler Lockett with a pair of... Um, and Tyler Lockett had some bad uh, mistakes there that kept the game close. But, yeah, great great job by your Seattle Um you know, and you know, Geno Smith. Who knows? Who knows what what, uh, what what he might do here? I mean, I'm not totally sold on him yet, but I'm really impressed with what he's been doing. Um, but I do have to take Arizona in this game, um, just because I think Arizona is the better team. There, are, Arizona is at home, uh, slightly here. Uh, but another, it's another game where Arizona just starts slow. Like th- this team is so weird. It's like they need Viagra. They always start slow. I don't get what their problem is here. Um, but uh, Arizona did have uh, Arizona had three minutes until the final minute of the first half. It's always that, and then eventually they get going. Um, yeah, they, they just don't have the right tempo here. Not, not my tempo. So, yes, and a lot of mistakes there. Um, um, you know, a lot of mistakes there that could have gotten Arizona back in the game yesterday. Two interceptions, a botched snap, a muff punt. Um, at the end, though, Arizona is the better team there at home, and I'm going to give Arizona the edge. But, uh, yeah, although if Seattle really wants to show, all right, we can keep this going, go in and beat Arizona on the road. That would be fun. But I'm going to take Arizona here. Um, Kyle Murray and, uh, Kyle Murray continues to do what he does to do things. Um, Get DeAndre Hopkins more involved, and I think that will happen here in this game. Give me the Cardinals minus two and a half. The Los Angeles Rams and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are two and a half point favorites. I mean, the Rams, that was a tough loss there against San Francisco. Uh, and Yeah, I know the Niners are a better team, but oof. Uh, they've now lost eight regular season games in a row to the Niners. They were talking about this is the best rivalry in football. I'm like, is I, I guess. Um, they were talking about that in the Fox promo for this, and I'm like, ugh. I mean, the Rams just own them. Uh, even though the Rams, you know, did win last year in the NFC Championship game, so I guess uh, maybe it's not totally there. Um, I mean, the Rams are three and four, losing both games to San Francisco here. They're going to need to do something. Um, they, they have to get a pass rusher there. Uh, they could probably a running back. Um, uh, although, yeah, they, they 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 did have two sacks and one or four yesterday, so maybe they don't need a pass rusher. Running back though, forty six yards on sixteen carries, not good enough. They're probably going to need something there. We'll see what, the, what they do here for tomorrow. Um, but the Rams two and a half winner dogs. Um, and uh, I'm taking them here in this game because Tampa Bay just everything is the Tom Brady season from hell continues. Now divorced, um, they just keep losing and losing and losing. And this would, I feel like would be another just exclamation point on there if the Rams are able to pull this off. I'm starting to doubt Tom Brady here. I know I shouldn't I shouldn't doubt Tom Brady anymore, but I'm losing. Where's the faith here? He doesn't have to sell anymore. So they just, they started with the score there and just couldn't get it. They um they they, they looked bad for most of this game. Um, and yeah, again, there's injuries, there's offensive line problems, there's talent problems, it's, 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 whatever it is. And Todd Bowles, I think, is being exposed here as a coach. Um, there's just a lot of issues, a lot of uh, situation problems with the team. So that's why I think this is the time for the Rams to come back here. Two and a half points. Uh, I can see the Rams winning this one. Again, I, I can't believe I'm doubting Tom Brady, but I haven't seen anything as of late that makes me in any way, shape, or form excited about Brady and where he's going right now. So he's going to need to step it up here soon. I don't think it'll be here in this game. I think the Rams are going to get to the Bucks pretty good. Give me the Rams plus two and a half, and give me the Buccaneers to continue their descent. The Tennessee Titans and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs are 11 point favorites. Kansas City coming off a bye. Tennessee had their backup quarterback in yesterday. They did pull off the win. Um, thankfully, Derrick Henry was lights out. That's a Derrick Henry. We need four consecutive 200 uh, rushing yard performances against Houston, six over seven seasons. Um, 75 career touchdowns for Henry. That breaks Tennessee's career record. Um, the defense. Uh, really got going, you know, um, Je- Jeffrey Simmons yesterday with a sack, two tackles. Uh, they have great players, it's Simmons, Dupree, Tart, Autry, so many great guys all, all the way around. Uh, Tennessee just looks, they look good, uh, or at least or yesterday against, uh, Houston with a backup quarterback, but they're not Kansas City. Kansas City's coming off a bye. Kansas City just mowed down San Francisco. Um, it's just, it, 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 they look very, very solid. Just everything with what they're going, and uh, yeah, Mahomes. The whole, the whole. See, we've talked about how great their offense is. That'll continue here in this spot. Tennessee can try to um to bounce back here, 
uh, or to keep it going, but I just think against Kansas City, that's just a, a fait accompli. Uh, and uh, I think Kansas City's pass rush is going to get to whoever Tennessee's quarterback is. They're going to they're going to they're going to get the pressure to him, and I think Kansas City will mow this one down here Sunday night at home. I have Kansas City winning this one easily. Give me the Chiefs minus eleven. The Baltimore Ravens and the New Orleans Saints, the Monday night game. The Ravens are three-point favorites. Ravens, nice win there yesterday. Uh, or nice, nice win on, on Thursday night against Tampa Bay. Uh, Lamar Jackson, um, you know, he hasn't been great here as of late, although, you know, he was fine against Tampa Bay, but he really um, got it going there yesterday. Ravens just ground and pound. That's what they got to do, run the ball more. They ran 26 times for 204 yards. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Baltimore is 37-8 and eight when they run the ball 30 more times. So that's what they're going to have to do going forward here. Run the ball. Uh, they did lose Mark Andrews. They did lose Rashad Bateman. A couple of uh, problems there. Hopefully uh, you know, we'll see the, who's, uh, who's back. But Ravens got really good offensive game here. And I think the running game is going to step up over the Saints. Who um, I will say this. Saints look great against uh, uh, Vegas. Kamara with his uh, first three touchdowns of the year yesterday. Which was uh, like trying there. Uh, Taysom Hill looked good, so mm. Ravens. I'll take three. this is again not not one where there's, there's a lot of thought into this. Uh, I tried to block out that Thursday night game. It was just just seeing Brady like that just made me uh, made me look bad. But I think uh, the Ravens coming off not a bye but you know ten days. Um, I think their the running game is going to get to New Orleans here, and I think their offense will step up. I think they win on the road. New Orleans could pull uh, something out here. I mean, I mean you, they could easily win the NFC South, so there's nothing to get discouraged about yet. But I think this is the game where the Ravens uh, shine through. Give me the Ravens, minus three. That's it for now, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel and you like to see me, please subscribe down below. I'll be back next week with week 10 predictions and a bunch of other things in the NFL and some NBA content coming soon and some baseball content coming later this week. Take care and God bless.